Hi and welcome back. So a while ago I got this set from Royal Talents. It's the Van Gogh 12 plus 3 pocket uh, set of Van Gogh uh, watercolors and I have quite enjoyed this. And, um, so they have been developing developing their Van Gogh line the past year or two and they come out with a few more of these uh, little pocket boxes and um, with themes and I've been looking at them but there were too many colors that were overlapping with with this set already and I am not too keen on having too many overlapping colors um, there's one with earth tones and another one with reds and oh, can I remember? That, that's, that's a few. There's three, four, five sets. So the, I just got this one in today. It's the one called muted colors and there's only one color that overlaps with the 12 plus 3 set. So um, I decided to try this. There's also some colors on here in here that I haven't really tried before. So let's have a look. This is the 12 set, and you can see the difference here is that there's no wells right there. There is in, in this set. So this is a, a 12 set, and it, it's the same way as the other one with the travel brush. And it has this kind of flattened end because you can use it to to lift out this pan here, and then there's extra mixing space there. And also the pans click into the wells, and if you want them out, this was supposed to be uh, for you to pry them out with, but it doesn't work in in my set. That I'm Ruin in this one, so I use a scissors, pair of scissors or something when I need to pick out a pan. So they are wrapped in here. The other set I had that uh, has there was not wrapped. Um, they were just sat in there and had a plastic film over it with the color information. So let's. There's. Uh, on. There's uh, some information on the wrapping here. And once I get my thing in order here. So, light fashion, three stars, that's good. And this is opaque, uh, that's the item number. So, this is buff titanium. Titanium buff. Do we have pigment information? somewhere not that I can tell that's unusual or maybe down there pigment oh I can't read that can I read them on here Pigman PW6 and PBR7. PBR7 is one of the earth tones, maybe an umber that they mixed with white. Okay, so it's not the PW6 colon one that is the normal titanium buff. So this is a hue, it's a color that is made to look like the titanium buff. I don't want to rip it to bread because I want all that information to stay here. Kind of cream colored. And it has this, this ridge here on the side that fits with a, a little ridge in the pan. So when you put it in, you can click it there. Okay, I need a sheet of paper to take notes on. And then I will unwrap these 
on a speed uh, thing here. So be right back. Okay, let me voice this over. So I made a sketch there of which colors went where because there's not really any information on the pans themselves. Um, in this set there's, I'd say, three bright colors. There is gamboge, which is a yellow that is in the middle of the left side. Next to it is quinacridone rose. And then in the middle bottom row is a turquoise green. And that's really the bright colors there. There is a lavender in here. I'll get back to that. That is mixed with white. And that is one of the colors I would never buy on my own. Uh, because it's difficult to mix with um, with dark colors. It tends to just get uh, turn into a muddy mess. So yeah, they are unwrapped. And um, let's, uh, let's watch them. So first is Titanium Buff. And that is a very faint cream color. It's very nice. And Gamboge. And Nabel's yellow red and Quinn Rose, that's the lavender right there. Indigo, very dark indigo by the way. The turquoise, olive green, nice olive green. Davis Gray, one color I don't use much. I have an old old pan that I use that was neutral tint and sepia and yellow ochre. I like this set. This is right up my alley. There's a couple of colors I would normally never buy, but Hey, you gotta try stuff out. So I'm kind of curious, what can this lavender do? What happens when we mix you with, say, Nabel's yellow? Which is your neighbor? Not a lot. <laughs> I need a little more color of both. That gives us an interesting gray color, as I actually expected. I expected a gray, but this is actually quite nice. I like that. So, Lavender, what else can we put you with? What happens if we take turquoise green with you? Get kind of like a dove blue. That's really nice. Oh, I like this. That could become a new favorite. Mm -hmm. Gamboge. You. This gives an eye gray of sorts because the opposite colors. Oh, this gives a greenish gray. <gasps> I love this. Oh, why haven't I ever had lavender on my palette before? I gotta try it with the yellow ochre as well. I'm sorry, I'm going for all the neutral set. Start here. Oh, this gives a muted greenish. I am excited. If you can't guess from my gasps. Oh, this is. This is. I don't know what to paint with it, but oh my god, I like the colors. Okay, so let's try something that might work actually better. Let's see with the quinacridone rose here. What do you do with that? Yeah, that just makes it redder, which is to be expected.
I end up using up this lavender just trying it out in all kinds of mixes. <laughs> Indigo. <gasps> oh, a really nice blue color. I am so thrilled with this set already. Oh my goodness. Lavender. I'll skip the olive green for now because I'm curious what it does with the sepia. Sepia totally killed it. Another interesting gray. Mixed with dark tones, you really start seeing the white in that mixture come out. <clears throat> Get this kind of hazy gray color. Neutral tint, I'll be a little more careful with that. Yeah, just darkens it up. I'm sorry, I did two colors off camera. I was so excited that I didn't keep an eye on my screen. Let me put it over here. So that was the indigo and lavender, and here's the quinacridone rose and the lavender. So lavender. And Davis Gray. Another kind of gray. Got nine. Um, I've got to be one I haven't. Oh, yeah, I haven't tied with a Titan. Yeah, as expected, that just paled it down. And yeah, let's try the olive green with it as well. Give us a gray screen. Well, when you start mixing it, you definitely start to get those muted colors they, they advertised. Um, I like the, that was just the lavender. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I will not put us through all the combinations of this because that is a lot. I was curious with the lavender because it's a color I never used before. Um, but there's definitely possibilities in here. So let's try the navel yellow here. Again, this is one of those colors I... I have a couple of navel yellows, but it's not one I really use much. Try with a little bit of sepia in it. Yeah. The gamboge here. Yeah. Okay, that nearly just made a yellow ochre type of thing. So yeah, so the Cornacron Rose is a very bright color. 
Um, so it's a gamboge actually, and the gamboge is a warm yellow, so I expect this to give us a fairly bright type of orange. Not even. I guess that quinacridone is a little too cool then. Not bad. Let the the gamboge dominate. Indigo. The gamboge. Give some dark, really nice greens. <coughs> when you get a limited palette like this, mixing is really important because you can rarely paint anything much right out of the box. So sit down with some not too expensive paper and try mixing things either systematically or at random and try mixing stuff you would never imagine would give you a good color because sometimes you can get so surprised on uh, seeing what what it does and get some really interesting results so olive green and this Naples yellow red All that neutralizes each other in a very subtle way. This is a set that just screams for landscaping and natural scenes. Because it got really good colors for that. Mm, this is something else we should try. Turquoise. Green. That gives a really bright purple with the Quinn color. The turquoise I find a little weak in its both in its tinting strength but also its the color of it in, in mass tone. Seems to glaze nicely enough as well. Let's see how opaque that is, that titanium buff. I'll leave it to dry. So, oh, I am really quite excited about this set. That uh, they have put some thought into what colors goes in here, that's for sure. So there are enough bright colors for you to, to make some bright things. Um, but it's really aimed at the muted colors. If they if there was only muted colors in here, it, mixing could be kind of difficult because muted colors with muted colors kind of mutes them down even further. So it would be almost monochromatic if they didn't add some bright colors. I think this is really fantastic. So turquoise green, I did that already. That was I gave that purple. And 
get some spring green there for the turquoise and the gamboge. I am, um, that's worth all the money and it's not even all that expensive. I think I paid 18 euros for the whole set and a fresh pan cost two and a half euros, three euros or something. So it's quite inexpensive. You can also get the Van Gogh uh, paints as uh, in tubes so you can refill your your pans if you like or if you just like tube paints in general okay I have to take a break um, so yeah and I move things around anyways I'm not quite done with this in the beginning I said there was only one color that was overlapping between this muted set and the Twelve plus three set, and that's actually not true. Now I've had a chance to look at them closer. There's the quinacridone red in both of them, um, no quinacridone rose, but there is also a yellow ochre in both. So there's two colors that overlap. I'd say the quinacridone rose is okay because that's a color that at least I use a lot and. Especially on this set, since that is the only real red in there, that will be used up, uh, or used a lot. Um, and yellow ochre, I'm okay with having an extra yellow ochre. Uh, if I had paid a little more attention, I would not have unwrapped this one. I would have uh, had saved it and then bought another pan to put in here. But hey, it's there. It's okay. Um, between the two, it's... Uh, it's quite a collection of colors. There's some that are kind of similar. Other than the yellow ochre. The sepia is uh, quite close to the burned umber. This, the burned umber in the, the 15 set is more red and warm than the sepia. But you could neutralize that out with different means. The neutral tint and the paint's gray. Now it looks a lot different. Uh, on the paper because I didn't put so much paint on here but a lot on that one but in color there there's it wouldn't matter too much if you used one or the other in a painting um, but no not too much the as of yellow medium in the 15 set could uh, you could switch it with the gamboge they are very close in in color as well both nice warm yellows so um, and yeah and if I'm, I'm kind of glad I got both sets because um, between the two it's it gives me a quite a good palette because this set has kind of some of the colors that I was sort of missing a little bit in the 15 set not that I couldn't paint with a 15 set, you absolutely can, you just need to mix a lot of stuff. But, um, yeah, I like that, I like this. Oh, I had something else on my mind that I wanted to say, which I totally and utterly forgot. Yeah, I made this uh, off camera. Um... This will be my swatch chart that I keep in my my binder where I have swatch charts of all my sets of paint. Um, and I think I need to do something to tell these two apart. Because when they're closed and after a little while this one will get as dirty as this one. So I should probably find some nice stickers or something to put on here. So yeah, hmm, yeah. I uh, I study. I, I put on here. Put also the the pigment information. That was what I couldn't think of before. So they are pretty much nearly all mixed pigment colors. There's the yellow ochre and the quinacridone rose that are single pigment colors. The others are mixed. I mean, but indigo, olive green, sepia, and neutral tint and Davis Gray. Those five are almost always mixed pigment colors whenever you buy watercolors with those names. So, and the same with Gamboge. There, there's 
and if you find a gamboge that is not a mixed pigment color then it's at a different price range. Titan Buff is kind of a new thing to, to watercolors. I only know of three brands that has it other than than this. You can find it in Core and Roman Schmaltz has it and I think Daniel Smith has it. It's the only three other than Van Gogh I've seen it. The titanium buff they use is a PW6 colon 1 I believe which is it's also sometimes called unbleached titanium white. Um, here it's a mixture uh, and that's okay. Nables yellow is, is kind of a a funny thing because sometimes you can find it as a single pigment and sometimes and more often than not actually it's a mixed pigment thing and it's often based on the yellow ochre and this one is as well it's yellow ochre and a PO43 I am not sure which orange color that is uh, oranges and reds I'm not super strong in, in terms of the pigment codes the lavender I mentioned when I was watching it out that I had that feel that it was that was white mixed into it, and there is it is made by PB29, PV15, and PW6, which is titanium white. So it has white in it, and it shows up in the when you mix, especially mix it with with dark colors, it gets kind of a hazy gray feel to it that is not super nice. I think at least. So there was also another follow up I want to do and that was the opaqueness of the titanium buff. This didn't come out very nice, it, uh, it's kind of spotty, but it is, mm, I'd say semi opaque. Uh, so wow, I think I got all the stuff I wanted to say. Um, so the next thing is to actually paint something with these colors. And, um, that is next. I just need to find some paper and stuff. I don't want to paint on this uh, canvas paper. It promotes separation of the colors um, in a way that I'm not in the mood for dealing with today. It looks kind of interesting if you look at it like here. Uh, I think what was that? That was probably lavender and Naval yellow, maybe some yellow. I have already forgotten. Um, so I'll find some different paper and I'll be right back and I'll make a sketch as well. Okay, I decided to work without a sketch first, and my favorite paper, Saunders Waterford, 100% cotton. I know everybody else uses arches. I use this. I absolutely love this. It's made in the UK by St. Coast Personal. I love all their paper. So that's my watercolor crime. So what I want to do is kind of a landscape type of thing with where I will try and work wet in wet. Um, it's always a trade-off with what I show on camera and what you can see of my palette which is usually nothing so let's go need a big brush for starters I have decided to voice this over as this video is long enough so this will count as my final thoughts as well so here I am, I'm testing out, I believe, some Davies Grey and the Titanium Buff. The Titanium Buff was kind of redundant because it doesn't really show on this cream colored paper. But yeah, I'm mixing some different shades of brown here for starters. And I want a reddish brown here in the foreground. So I took the Quinn Rose with the Sibia color. And made some green so think I based 
all the greens on olive green here. Uh, olive green and sepia and... Oh, what's that neutral tint? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, I mixed pretty much all the colors. Uh, see me use. The flow of the paint is a little beyond little under medium it, it doesn't flow super well but it is it does flow enough so that thing you can make flat washes and stuff like that uh, and it flows together and as it should it is not one of those though that where you put a little dot in one corner it just totally runs across the page it's not like that it's it's very easy to work with I'd say and um, yeah, I'm playing around with effect brushes here. There's a fan brush and stuff. Used a lot of the brushes because they all have their different characteristics and strokes and stuff. But muted, yes. Colors are definitely muted here. And um, it's a super nice palette and I found it very easy to work with. Um, yeah, I made a splash up on that left corner. I was splashing a little, excuse me, a little too hard when I was rinsing a brush. And I just left it to dry and I'll go back and fix it later. And yeah, I was just playing around with my landscape there. I did have a reference photo, but I was only following it ever so loosely. Um moving things around and leaving some other things out and, but um, I really enjoyed working with this palette it, uh, it just delivered there was no fuss no mess this paper promotes uh, color shift so things get pale when it dries and that's because the pigments simply sink in to the paper so well so that caused me to add a few extra layers because uh, that's just how this paper works. It's no fault of the pigments and the paints. And um, yeah, it was easy to create textures and they glazed nicely uh, on top of each other. I have absolutely no complaints about how. Uh, how this goes. I um, I feel like adding a couple of colors to my other palettes with professional paints, that's for sure. Um, I fell back in love with Davies Grey and I really like that titanium buff actually, even though I didn't use it much here. I mixed it in with some sepia actually. I, some of the lighter browns that I use is, is sepia and titanium buff. And, uh, yeah, we needed something to fix the foreground focus there, so how about a fence? And, um, yeah, it was nice just playing around. And yes, this whole painting is just dabbles and dots and streaks and stuff layered on top of each other. There's really not much to it. It is all illusion of detail. And um, yeah, the, the color scheme is right up my alley. Normally I, I go for, when I buy paint, I, I buy bright colors because it, it increases my ability to mix colors that I want. I can mix bright colors with bright colors and stuff. But it's actually quite cool to have this palette. Um, where I don't have to mix quite as much. So... Um, so it was quite straightforward. I can highly recommend this if you like to 
do landscapes or animal painting it is absolutely good for that maybe not so much if you are a paired portrait painter uh, probably would be a good one for that or if you do floor paintings you need bright reds and stuff but yeah landscapes animals that are not bright colored pet mammals and stuff like that yeah absolutely I don't know how well this would work for portraits I haven't tried to mix any colors that resemble skin tones but uh, yeah somebody else who's a portrait painter has to decide on that I definitely had fun with it and yes I know this was a massively long video and if you're still with me Thank you very much for sticking by. I appreciate it. And I'll I got some other videos coming up and I'll try and stick to a shorter format with those. I was just overly excited about this set of paints. It has been a while since I was this enthused. And I miss doing landscape paintings. I I really enjoy that and that's the only time where I find it easy to loosen up and just go with the flow so thank you all for watching please like subscribe and all that good YouTube stuff um, this has been really a lot of fun so I'll just be quiet for the rest of it thank you for watching